In this video, I'd like to talk about programming toolpaths on the multi-station fifth axis tombstone fixture. We'll take advantage of the planes and fixturing Jesse highlighted in a previous video and walk through optimizing the toolpaths to really reduce cycle times on these parts. Using a single five axis vice setup was great for making five to 10 parts, but now we have to produce 200 parts, which would take days to finish. Taking advantage of the fifth axis pin vise and centering vise allows us to machine two parts at once in each setup to double our throughput. With dual parts in the first two setups, we can now add an engraving operation to the third setup with little cycle time impact. Let's jump into Mastercam and start the setup for this tombstone program. The first thing I wanna do is copy my parts to each fixture in the orientation they'll be on the machine. At first, to prove out the program, I will work on completely machining each setup at a time. These toolpaths will be the same toolpaths used on a single setup five axis video. Additionally, we'll have to program the first setup and the third engraving setup. The first setup would be the pin vise setup to machine the bottom half of the business card holder. We want to make sure we position the part in the raw stock so we have some material to face. Using the 2D contour toolpath, we'll make sure our WCS is set to the tombstone WCS and the tool plane and C plane is set to op one. We'll copy the first stock model down and call it after face. We'll set our initial stock to the first stock model, op one initial stock. Then we'll select the facing operation as the source operation. After that, we'll use an OptiRough toolpath to rough the part. We'll leave 50,000 stock on the walls to leave some material for the next setup. We'll select the last stock model after face as our stock. For the last operation in this setup, we'll use a contour toolpath to finish the lower wall using a half inch bull nose end mill. We'll set our stock to leave to zero. Then on the second setup on the centering vise, we will machine the rest of the business card holder with the same five axis tool pass as in a single five axis setup. On the third setup, we'll use the fixture Jesse created to locate the final part against two qualified surfaces for some engraving operations on the last side. There are a few toolpaths that can engrave these logos on the parts. In this case, I want to use a multi-axis unified toolpath with a project curve strategy just for the collision control and linking options. We'll use a quarter inch engraving bit for these operations. We'll select the logo wireframe entities as our cut pattern and the face that we want as the machining geometry. Setting the machining geometry's offset to negative three thousandths will set the cut depth. Under the Project Curves option drop-down menu, we will increase the max projection distance to half an inch to let the toolpath look for the surfaces below the wireframe curves. We'll launch Verify to check for collisions and make sure we're removing the material that we want. We can see that in Operation 2, we have a stock model showing the stock flipped from Operation 1. Jesse will touch on stock models some more in the next video.
After using Verify to make sure we're correctly removing material and have no part collisions, we'll reorder the toolpaths into toolpath groups based on the tool used. One of the advantages of using a multi-station fixture is to optimize the amount of tool change needed to save cycle time. Let's go back into Mastercam and sort the operations by tool. First, we'll use this two inch die edge face mill for setup one. We can use the same half inch Mitsubishi bull end mill for the OptiRough toolpath in both setup one and setup two, along with the Swarf toolpaths. Then we will switch to the 3/8 bull end mill to do the OptiRest toolpath for the interior pocket and the contour toolpaths. After that, we can deburr with the quarter inch ball end mill for both setup one and setup two. Finally, we will use a quarter inch engraving bit to engrave logos on all three setups. Additionally, we want to tackle linking moves to reduce cycle times. The tombstone fixture takes up a lot more room and will have tools and holders in close proximity. We will want to check our program with simulation to make sure there are no collisions with any fixturing and clamps. The program looks good and we're ready to run it on the machine. The last thing we want to do is add some Haas M codes to restart the program at the end for continuous production. We'll add a manual entry program stop to index parts to the next setup. Then we'll use an M99 to continuously loop back to the start of the program. I hope this video shows how you can take the next step in 5-axis work holding and programming a multi-setup tombstone fixture. Spending more time programming on the computer will shave cycle times in the long run and really reduce any costly operator errors at the machine. Being able to use multiple setups and cut two parts at once now brings the average cycle time to less than 50% of the single 5-axis setup and almost 75% reduction from using a 3-axis machine. In the next video, Jesse will be going in-depth about using stock models to machine parts accurately and really be confident that you are removing the material that you want with no wasted motion.